This video is the first part in a two-part video. It teaches you how to use browser web development tools. All the main browsers have these tools, but I have chosen to concentrate on the developer tools in Google Chrome. So let's get started. I have created a simple index.html file. I have put some simple elements inside just to give us something to work with. It has a div with the class of container, an h1 tag with the text header for DevTools test, and there is a button with the class btn and click me text. There is nothing in the styles.css at the moment. The script.js has a reference to the to the button element, and there is an add event listener added to the the button reference with click as the event when the click event occurs button clicked is triggered and when button clicked is triggered it causes inside button clicked to be displayed in the console i make the browser full screen so we can start using dev tools the shortcut keys to DevTools are Control shift i or F12. Alternatively, you can access it by clicking on the th these three dots and then clicking on More Tools and then Developer Tools. You can close it by clicking on the X. Get DevTools back up. You can change where you have DevTools docked from you can have it on the left or you can have it at the bottom or you can have it undocked so as it's another window you can also have it back on the right hand side which is where I had it originally I normally have it at the bottom but for this, so as you can see it better, I'm going to have it on the right hand side. Right, I'm going to get a new tab and type get bootstrap. Get bootstrap. Go to the bootstrap page and get up DevTools. And then I'm going to click on, on this, which is the toggle device toolbar. And then you get this where you can you can see how it responds responsibly and here you can see the width changing like so another thing this is the this is what I normally use but you can also that's mobile that's another mobile another mobile, a tablet, laptop and widescreen and also you can if you click on this you can choose different devices like Samsung S8, SB Plus or iPhone 12 Pro you can turn a device toolbar off by clicking on this. If I go to this heading and right click and choose inspect, it takes me right to where it is. And then if I double click that, I can change it. Here's another title. So you can change it quite easy. Here's another title. It only changes it though at your end. If you refresh the screen, it goes back. It's only changing the, the memory in your PC, not on the website. So you can't mess around with other people's website. Another thing you can do is if you click on this, you can turn 
You get a list of the classes. You can turn them on or off by clicking this arrow. Also, if I click this CSS property font size in this CSS class, I can turn it on and off. Another thing I can do is if I take this container folder and click edit as HTML, comes out as HTML and then I could say enter a p tag this is a p tag this is a p tag the thing is, you can use DevTools to find out how other sites work. As long as you don't copy sites, you can find out how other developers do things and experiment with elements without fear of messing things up. When you have finished experimenting, you can refresh the screen and everything goes back to normal. Going back to the original file, if I select container, then if I go here, where it says Element Styles, I can select some styles. So if I select Display, Flex. So now the button's gone in line, because by default, Flex Direction is Row. So to get over that, I'm going to set the Flex Direction to Column. And now it's gone back, but now it's stretched. And I can get over that by going align items and center. So now it's centered everything and the button is no longer stretched. Next I'm going to do justify content center. I want to center it on the screen but I'm going to have to give it some height as well. So height say 800 px see what that looks like now that's too far down okay so let's make it 500 px see what that looks like that's better what i could do now is copy the styles for the container class copy these properties and then go back to our files, click on styles, and then dot container, and paste it. So now I can refresh the screen. Those styles are gone from DevTools but they're now getting the styles from the style sheet. If I go down here, it gives me the, the size and the padding, the border and the margin. But there is no, no margin, padding and border on this particular element. What we could do is I could put some margin in. Let's give it margin 10 px and then border say 5 px solid And then for padding, give it 20px padding. Right? So now if we look at that, we've got the margin of 10px and the border of 5px and the padding. As I go over margin, border and padding on the box sizing, you can see different colours for each 
shown in the browser window. Similarly, if I go to there, you can see the margin and padding highlighted. Okay, so I'll refresh that for now to make put it back to where it was. And we move on to the console tab. Notice that when I click on the button, it displays inside button clicked. Consider a situation where you have a button that when clicked causes a complex function to run. The first thing I would do is create the button and add an event listener to the button and then create the complex function but with only a console log in it with a message like inside button clicked. That way I've proven that the event listener is working and that the function runs. I can next build the complex function and I know that if there is a problem, it must be somewhere in the code of the function. So it's good practice because it helps us with debugging our code. Displaying messages, though, is not the only thing we can use the console for. We can also use it for interactive JavaScript. We can do maths like 1 plus 2. That gives us 3. But we have to be careful with values to the right of the decimal point. Watch this. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 should give us 0 0.3, but it gives us this. However, what I can do is if I create a bracket, then another bracket, 0 0.1 times 10, 10, plus 0.2 times 10, closing bracket, closing bracket again, and then divide by 10, then I get correct answer. There's a number of things you can do starting with the dollar symbol. For instance, dollar parenthesis can be used rather like a document query selector. So if I go dollar and then parentheses and dot dot container it gives me the the container. I can click this arrow to see the H1 header and the button. Also, I can assign it. So if I go constant container equals dollar dot container, and then I can I can if I go container, we can display the container element again. I can add an event listener to my container now. Dot add event listener. Click. And then, and then I do shift and enter because it's on more than one line. And do console log. You clicked the container. So now if I click on the container I get you clicked the container. Dollar underscore gives the last value displayed. So if I go constant x equals 3 and then do dollar unders underscore I get undefined because I haven't displayed it yet. But if I go x so it's displayed and now I do 
dollar underscore we can see it and if I set constant y equals 2 and display that dollar underscore is now 2 dollar naught gives me the last element inspected so if I right click on the H1 and click inspect it takes me to the H1 and if I go to console and then go dollar naught it gives me the H1 header if I then go to the button and then right click and inspect that it takes me to the button and then if I go to the console dollar naught is now the button and dollar one is now the H1 dollar one is the one before the button so in a similar way dollar two will be the one that the head the element that was inspected before that and dollar three the one that was inspected before that and so on you've already seen what console log does but you can also have console dot error for an error message oh no an error has occurred see that comes up in red because it's an error and also console dot warn this is just a warning for something that's not quite so serious and that comes up with yellow and this little triangle symbol you can also have console dot table table and we can have this first name Fred last name so you have uh, Jason inside that and then if I print that I get a a nice little table console dot time is call it my loop for no, let j equal naught and for let i equal naught i is less than 2000 i plus plus then j plus equals i J then console dot time end my my loop
we've got the time for how long it took. It took 0.52 milliseconds to complete. Right, I'll clear this. The last thing I'm going to show you is console dot assert. I'm going to 50 is greater than 70, which it's not, of course. And then I'm going to give a message 50 is not greater than 70. And this will fail. There we are. Fails. 50 is not greater than 70. So if I now do console dot assert and do 70 is greater than 50 and then do Seventy is greater than fifty. This will not show because this is true. So this is can be used for testing. In the first part of this tutorial on DevTools, I have shown you how to access the DevTools and shown you how we can use Elements tab to view and change the elements and styles. I went on to show you how to use the console. There are lots of options in DevTools, but I am just going through the ones I find most useful. In the next video, I'll show you how to use Sources, Network and Application tabs. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe for more.